Good morning, everyone. Dr. Victoria Skirbo here, speaking to you from the Seeds of Transformation Healing Center in Wareham, Massachusetts. Today is Wednesday, September 21st, and the moon is in Leo. Uh, the Leo moon is pretty busy today, uh, as is the planet Jupiter. Um, we start the, the early morning with um, the moon making a trine to Jupiter and Aries. That's a flow of energy. Uh, it is a, a trine of creative self-expression. Um, you might have had some creative dreams last night. I know I woke up after a sort of a strange creative dream. Uh, and in the last, the last part of it, I was um, at an ice cream parlor ordering ice cream, and the lady was uh, telling me um, how expensive the ice cream was. But um, I had the money to pay for it, but she, I don't know, assumed I didn't. So I got mad and I left without the ice cream, which is unheard of. You never leave without the ice cream. Anyway, that was my weird dream. Um, <clears throat> we have um, Mars making a quintile with Jupiter today. And then Jupiter making a semi, uh, a semi square to, um, to Saturn. Uh, let's talk about those things. Quintiles are kind of magical elements that bring out our, our talents, right? We have Jupiter and Aries. Jupiter and Aries wants to kind of start a whole new, um, 12 year cycle really w wants to begin anew. Uh, wants to go in a new direction. Um, and uh, <clears throat> Jupiter is retrograde right now. And it will retrograde back into Pisces, where it will spend uh, some time in the last, I think, three degrees of Pisces before it turns around, goes back out, and then spends the rest of the of its time in Aries and then goes to Taurus, etc., etc. But um, this quintile um, brings talents even or abilities that maybe we don't even know we have so it's a really good aspect because or we actually may know we have but nobody is utilized up to this point right uh nobody else knows <laughs> so that's a good thing but as long as we know i guess that's really the most important thing because it's up to us to use our own talents right the semi-square between saturn and jupiter is part of the synodic cycle uh, between these two planets, that cycle is a 20-year cycle. It's considered a financial cycle. It's also considered a generational cycle. They came together at the end of 2020 at one degree of Aquarius. Some people uh, think that is the beginning of the Aquarian age, but people have been saying that um, the beginning of the Aquarian age started back when we, we discovered Uranus. But... Uh, <clears throat> There are levels of awareness around this stuff, and with Saturn and Jupiter conjoining in 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 um, Aquarius, and then come um, March of 2023, Pluto moving into Aquarius, even if temporarily in the first degrees of Aquarius, there's really no denying that the whole idea or ideal of the Aquarian age, uh, its time has come, and more and more people are aware of the possibility of it. Really, it depends. You know, there's the, there's the, the influences that we have in the sky, but if we don't catch on, <laughs> utilize them uh, <clears throat> in, the, in the best way possible, it's like um, uh, an opportunity wasted. And so this is uh, about moving into the Aquarian Age. And the Aquarian Age is an age of um, equality, equality between men and women, between rich and poor, um, between any person in any country, we are all human beings. That is the commonality that we have, and we have the same needs. Um, and we're learning that pretty fast. The semi-square actually starts um, a cycle of moving into um, a, a, the crescent phase of these two planets coming together. And so uh, it moves in and out. It, uh, we had this aspect, uh, 721, that's July 21st, when we have it again um, 
actually March 21st, uh, 2023, March of 2023 is big shift energy month. Um, Mars finally gets out of, um, Gemini after seven months, Pluto moves into Aquarius and Saturn moves into, <laughs> um, Pisces. So there's a big shift, but this is sort of the last push, the last hurrah. And things are going to get a little bit crazier before they, they calm down and settle down. Um, but it doesn't mean that you have to be crazy about it. Um, <clears throat> and so we have to rethink the way that we live in our own society. Are we living in the right place? Are we doing the right work? Or are is the work we're doing organized in a way that that gives us the most benefit f from it, right? Especially if you're self-employed, right? If you're self-employed, how do you utilize your resourcefulness and your talents uh, to create something that will, uh, will, uh, no one is necessarily survive, stand up, stand up to the challenges ahead. And, and there are many, certainly, um, it, not the least of which is climate change. That's probably the most, right? Um, wars come and go, but climate is here all the time. Um, and then let's just talk a little bit about the moon squaring its own nodes. The moon in, in Leo squares the nodes in uh, south node Scorpio, north node uh, Taurus. You feel halfway between the past and the future, feel a little stuck perhaps. The best thing is to do in this case is to apply yourself to the future. Apply your creative talents to the future. Express yourself in the direction of the future that you want to see. And that will help you uh, make the most out of... Uh, a difficult situation, honestly. And then at the end of the day, the moon in Leo makes a trine to Chiron in Aries. There's a flow of understanding and healing energy with that. And certainly we could use that. So uh, <clears throat> an active day, a kind of a fiery day, something that uh, you can get a lot of work done. There will be challenges, but the challenges that we face today are more longstanding challenges. And how do we plan for them? All right, guys, um, that is the, that is the uh, astrology of the day, and that is, hi, Charlie, that's Charlie. Uh, I, Michael and I have been cleaning up the driveway, you see that, these piles of grass, this is all the grass that grows between the, the pavers. Uh, we usually try to keep up with it, but the bunnies like to eat it, so <laughs> left it for the bunnies, really. But uh, hopefully the next time you see this driveway, it'll look a little bit neater because we'll have picked up all the stuff that we've been working on. So, But it's a beautiful day here, um, kind of warmish, muggyish. We're expecting some rain. Uh, tomorrow, I believe, it's going to rain all day. So if I, we can get this stuff off the ground, that would be very helpful for us. But we still have flowers blooming. And I just want to show you, I picked up another hibiscus. It was like sitting outside of the store and it looked so sad and dry and I'm like, I have to take this one home. So we plan on planting this one in the, uh, isn't it sweet with the, with the pink flowers? Now, I don't know if they're going to get as big as our dinner plates, but you know, and then we got some mums because you always get mums this time of year. Uh, but we're going to put it in the uh, puppies uh, garden and see because uh, towards the end of this, the summer, once the bleeding heart is left, um, it just looks straggly and like there's nothing there. So we're going to put that there and that'll be our late summer, early fall kind of vibe for that garden. But have yourself a wonderful day. Charlie and I are going to go inside. I'm going to have a cup of coffee. He's going to have, I think, tuna. <laughs> but whatever it is, he's going to enjoy it. Have yourself a wonderful day. Uh, like, subscribe, and uh, take care of yourselves. Namaste.